Alrighty, let's do some of these not so tiny toes. You're gonna have to super zoom because I'm gonna be okay. all kinds of leaning in. Okay. Okay, we're going to use the sprout that's in your supply pack. Oh, so pretty. And we're gonna use nice, this is a bat that we make here, so, um, but you're getting a section of it, so it's about a quarter of a bat. But you need to pull off nice and narrow strips. Maybe I like to work with about three to four inches long. So wispy, pretty wispy. Pretty narrow, pretty narrow. It's a good comparison to the wire. Okay, so then I go around the palm to get started and then I pick a, I pick a digit, I pick a finger. And I come up and this is going to take forever. When I have about a quarter inch left on my wire, I get a little swax on there. And then I press my wool into it. I think they can hear you feverishly. Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm taking notes. See, that swax just holds that wool right on there. And what's wonderful about these little frogs, unlike many other critters, is that they have this kind of like flat, grippy toe. So if your end of your foot, your end of your toe is not fabulous, you can cover a multitude of sins by putting swax on it. I like to have a little gnome or bunny butter to get my hands nice and oily. And then after a few seconds, I can press my swax into that little round grippy toe that they have. Isn't that cool? We're getting our water back. We are getting uh, water back. <laughs> it's a good thing. Frogs can't live without water. We, uh, we didn't have any water here this morning. We don't let that stop us. I can hear the water filling the building. It's like, <laughs> so what kind of music do frogs listen to? Um, you got this. Really, do think I? Think of the different kinds of music. Rock, jazz, hip hop. You got it. Hip hop? Yes. How about sophisticated frogs? Um, this one's a little bit of a stretch, but not really. This we're still talking about music. Yes, here. music. Sophisticated frog music. Sophisticated frogs like I have no idea. Hopera. Hopera. <laughs> so I'm still trying to keep them skinny. Um, I'll see you guys next week. I'll be here doing this for a little while. You also reaching forward into my work area because I'm all the way back here. <laughs> she's really saying that she's a little bit uncomfortable at this angle, but she's doing it for the camera. <laughs> I'm just going to do all my little swax toes at, at the end so that my hands aren't all sticky. They look great. Yeah, they do. Did you know there are frog proverbs? <gasps> you get excited about proverbs. I love proverbs. the proverbs. All right, let me look. Three women, three geese, and three frogs make a fair. F-A-I-R, a fair. This is a German proverb. Apparently, all you need is three women, three geese, and three frogs. And you've got a fair. You've got a fair. I'd say that's true. Uh, but I think you could substitute almost any animal there. Do you need the women and the geese? You, I mean, no, like, it could be... you got to have three women. Yeah. And then three whatevers, and it's Three women, party. for sure. 
Could it be three women, three pigs, and three squirrels? I don't. I don't know. Why? Why are? I don't know. It's got to be something in German folklore. Yeah. I always want my finger wraps to. Hmm. Finger wraps. Now I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> I've been talking about frog legs since we started. <laughs> to to start on the palm and return to the palm. And that's why I don't like to have a lot of wool on the palm because then it gets too built up. But, you know, coming out and back is what really secures it because you can't felt super duper much on the fingers. Oh, but I get to show you a new tool today momentarily. I mean, Swax does keep it on the fingers, too. Swax is such a, such a good helper. How about this Portuguese proverb? Let's hear it. When bulls fight, woe to the frogs. Interesting. I, I got nothing on that. Me neither. You're going to get stepped on, frog. When bulls fight, woe. Okay, I'm starting to see it. I don't see it. The bulls are big, they're powerful, the frogs are the little guys, yeah. when there's a big fight, I just the frogs don't, I think my hurt. problem with that one is that I just don't think of frogs and bulls as really near each other. Yeah. Maybe like, well, woe to the field mouse, or woe yeah. to the, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> that's a weird word. Woe to the frogs, really, is on the street. Is it woe, like... Hold back, or is it woe, like woe is me? W-O-E. Oh, uh, well, whoa. yeah, well, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna do all my little fingertips at the same time, which is nice, because I can just get them, get them all loaded up here. Try to get some on both sides, so I get a nice seal. And then I can oil my fingers. Give it a second so it doesn't stick to your finger, and then press it in. The Italians say if you're a mouse, don't follow frogs. That, hmm. that could be... Because they fart? With the bull. I'm thinking about the bulls and the field mice. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know. You could put a funky color in your swax for this if you wanted your little toes to have like little orange or something like that. Saffron. You did that. That could be kind of guy. cool. Yeah. I think that was by accident. Oh, it looks good. <laughs> it's right there. I think it looks on purpose. Um, so we can... Okay. See, in my real life, what happens is I get one hand done, and then I stop and go eat a piece of chocolate and then talk to somebody. You could do that. Okay. Well, I don't know that everyone really wants to see... All right, let's do All one hand. Let's do one, one hand, hand and one, one foot. foot. It's really the same thing. It is completely, absolutely the same I thing. I hope people have chocolate, which is my, which is my issue. What do you think I'm ADD? What am I? I <laughs> well, I was never. Are we ever... gonna? We're gonna do this on here? Yeah. <laughs> please, in your YouTube comments, please help me self-diagnose. <laughs> And then I'll live my life accordingly. Based on... Based on... Based what? on YouTube. Yeah. That's, that's a good plan. That's a good start, at least. <laughs> oh, I was just getting ready to put my needles into the... You don't love fussy details. It's not your thing. I just don't. I like the way they look. I like figuring them out. You do I it. would like to have a little. I would like to have a little gnome that lives here, and well, her name's Debbie, <laughs> <laughs> and she likes toes. Yes, Debbie needs to come move here. I mean, it's satisfying. I just get a little tense. I get a little <laughs> tense. All right, I got more. 
All right, tell me some more proverbs. These are we got a lot. fascinating but empty <laughs> to me. Um, I'm sure they mean a lot to somebody. Never try to catch two frogs in one hand. Oh, yeah. Say I like that the one. the Chinese. That, see, that makes sense. That's a good one. Don't keep your frog and your turtle in the same space. That is for your little frog. Have you ever seen a turtle eat a frog? <laughs> it's crazy. No. It happens so quickly. You don't but know that's... that a turtle... See, this is what happens. You don't know that a turtle can move that fast until you see them catch a frog. All right, this is almost thought, a finger fail, but we're we're gonna we're gonna make it work. I thought you were like giving a Serafina proverb. It is. That is a Serafina proverb. When the ducks are quacking, the frogs take it as a warning. Malagasy proverb. When the ducks that are That doesn't sound quacking, like a proverb as much as like a a statement on Nature? Yeah. What do ducks quack at? When the cows are lying down. It's going to rain. It's like that. I mean, it's just true. I'm on toe, rear toe number three. You're doing great. Thank you. I need your encouragement. I'm also going to push you. You must... Do all of the toes, even off camera, before you're allowed before to eat I'm anything. To eat. Yes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> You'll feel so good. You're right. You're right. I will. I You'll will. enjoy your food more. Yes. This is hard because it wants to bend around. You can't tell that because I'm a wire ninja. Yes. They'll know soon. Yeah. It's got a little skinny spot in there. It's all right. Is there a frog dance? That's what we. That's Ooh. what we're missing. That's. I you know what. When I'm finished these toes, I'm gonna do the frog dance. All right. That's my reward. That and lunch. Mm-hmm. Living the life. Who else gets to say that they get to do the frog dance after they finish wrapping Tiny Toes? I don't toes? know. There's got to be froggy music. I'll have to... Excuse me. I'll have to do a little search. The froggy music. Can you make sure it's hip-hop? It needs to be some kind of froggy hip-hop. Except it has to be royalty free or else YouTube will take down our video and yes. people won't ever learn how to make needle felted frogs with wet felted pelts. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm like three spins away from this foot. All right, maybe five or six. What is a frog's favorite flower? Oh, uh, I don't know. A crocus. Oh. That's a that's, good one, I right? That's probably true. This is the fun part. So every once in a while, you got to get your swax booger off the end of your... The cool thing is, it can go back in. Be generous with your swax on the end of your toes. <laughs> Starting to look funny. That is how you wrap some toes. 
All right, hop to it, people. Come on, Milo. This is what he reminds me of. He's like. much needed celebration after finishing yes finishing I'd say toes. 20 toes but it's not how many is it 16 16 it's a lot on these I like to take a nice strip of sprout and just to give them a little kind of froggy webbiness this also finishes out the palm I go around each finger So just kind of pulls the fingers together. So they have a, like a, just a slight web in between their fingers and by going around each finger with a little strip of sprout, you create that look. We have um, a tool that's great, it's called grab and stab, and it's great for little finger areas, tips of fingers. We're not going to felt the tip of the finger too much um, on these because they have swax on them. But if you did need to felt the tip of a foot, this tool works really well. Because you can hold it tightly, get an edge, and not, not stab yourself. So that's the difference once the palms are, once the um, base of the toes are wrapped. I'll show it on a hind foot. So I'm going from under the bottom right now. But once you've done it from the bottom, you could approach it from the top as well. It depends on how webbed you want it to be. So that would create like a really, a lot more web. I don't think I want all that. So I did it from, from around the bottom one direction, and then this I'm just going to take around to sort of blend, blend that out. So if someone were right-handed, they might hold the grab and stab in their <laughs> left Definitely. hand. Definitely. Okay. So those little feet are finished. I have to do my other two, but we'll move on for now. So I want to get some leg muscle on here. So I'm going to move back to my, my core wool, and I'm going to take a six-inch strip. I'm going to split it in half lengthwise, and all I'm going to do is travel between 
the hip and the knee back and forth and just build up a little muscle. So by going back and forth, I'm going to get kind of a bulge in the center of this area, this leg bone here. Since I did that to one side, I want to do it to the other side. Got to get those legs nice and meaty. Yeah. So we just kind of leave the leave the knees skinny. They really don't have our other animals have skinny legs and a bulky knee joint, you know. These are the opposite. And all of this gets covered with the skin that we're going to make. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom bottom half of the legs. Why are frogs so good at basketball? Because they can jump. Well, they always make the jump shots, yes. <laughs> I scoffed at your joke. <laughs> well, like, that's duh. nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing new. What is a frog's favorite soda to drink? Soda hop. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> All righty, and we want to do a little arm muscle. I'm trying to think, I feel like I mostly did it on their lower arm. Like they have this little, this little like kind of meaty, like Popeye, lower arm thing. So I still had a half of a six inch piece from way back when. I'm going to split that in half. And I'm going to build up right below the elbow joint. I'm going down towards the wrist, not quite all the way. Yeah, like Popeye, like that big arm muscle. And I have a little too much, so I'll just take some of that off. It's so funny. They're so funny looking. I'm scooting his little elbow up a little bit. What is a favorite frog drinking game? Um, gosh, it's like I don't even know regular drinking games, so <laughs> how am I going to know what frogs like? Uh, what's the one where you try to get it in the cup quarters? What's the one with the ping pong ball? I don't know what. Hopscotch. It's really not even a drinking game. It's Why just... does it say... Because of scotch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, like, they just, like, twisted reality yes. to make their this joke. This is how many of them go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. What do we do to the body? This is the question. We do a soft belly pillow. Ooh. Mm-hmm. We do a nose triangle. We do eye bumps. Alrighty, we're going to take our core wool and make some belly shapes. So we just need, it depends on how fat you want your frog to be. But I was making a pillow that goes here and up towards the chin. And then let's do that first. And then if you want, you can put um, little pillows on the, on the sides too. 
So let's take um, about uh, let's take an eight inch piece of core wool and then stretch it out to make it long and long and lean and then wrap um, about a two inch section on your the flat part of your Zoli tool maybe a little bit more than two inches three would be too much And then when you slide that off, one side's gonna seem a little more tapered and the other a little bulkier. So let the tapered side come up under the face and the bulky side come back towards the hips. And I did, I stretched that out a little bit, but we wanted to have that nice, um, you know, bulk under their throat and a little bit of belly here. Just tack that on. And then we're going to make two little round pillows to go on each side. So let's take a six inch piece of core, split it in half, and let's still use the flat part of the Zoli tool um, because I want a pillow with a lot of kind of give to it. So I'm just wrapping a little one inch section, one and a half inches, slide that off. Doing the same with that half of a six inch piece of core wool, slide that off. And then these are going to go on each side, just between the legs, so from the armpit to the hip again. It's a little tricky to get it sticking off the side, but that's what you want. That's what you want to do, is have it right on the side there. And so that just gives him a little froggier shape. I love their skinny little butt. It cracks me up. Just getting all this stuck together. Then they have kind of like a kind of like a hip ridge right here which the, the top of their, top of their basically what would be their hip bones or the top of their pelvis. So to do that, we're just gonna make a double decker taco out of core wool. So you wanna take a nice, um, I'd say like four inch piece of core wool, make it three inches. So I stretched that out, but like three inches and then three inches, and then put them next to each other vertically. So I fanned this out so that there's, you don't want like a stripe in the middle. You want them to sort of become one um, three inch square. Then we're gonna stab, stab across about an inch down or a third of the way down and fold that down. I'm gonna get this a little closer to two inches wide. And then stab about an inch area and then fold this up and I, I'm squeezing it together I don't want it to sprawl so much so now we have like this nice thick rolled edge that's what we call a double decker taco a little meatier than a regular taco and that rolled edge is going to become that hip ridge. I, I got too wide. I was afraid of that. So you want that to come across here and be nice and dramatic. And it gets really smoothed out when you put the... Um, 
when you put the pelt on. I'd say not quite halfway up. You know, you don't want it up by their shoulders. It should be a little bit um, farther down their back, just, just north of where their legs join their body. And then all this fringe can kind of wrap around their skinny little butt, make it kind of pull it into a triangle and just let it come around their little butt. That's that. And so now we just need a few face shapes and we're ready to wet felt their skin. I wanna make two um, pretty significant eye bumps. Um, the eyes get addressed several times as we go. We're gonna start with a three inch piece of core split in half and then wrap just in one spot around the round edge of your Zuli tool and do that two times. If you don't have a Zoli tool, you can use a pencil or a spoon handle or something. So now you have these two little seeds. And as much as possible, you want to, it's a little hard to see because everything's green, but you want to felt them into a nice size bump on the side of the head. I'd say about where the point of that armature was in your diamond that's kind of disappearing now because there's so much wool on it. So I'm coming at the edges to pucker it into a round bump. like so. <laughs> and then we need to build up this nose. So this is gonna end up actually being his lower lip. So we're gonna make a nice bulky um, triangle that the fringe comes back and starts to shape the face. So we need like two two inch pieces of core. So that's your two inch piece. You're gonna layer them up. So you have a nice little two inch square. I need to put my foot up. I'm probably gonna shake the camera, sorry. And then you wanna make a triangle that has some bulk on the end. So to do that, you start your triangle tip, I'm gonna fill a center line, but you start your triangle tip, instead of being the tip being right up here, you start it about a half an inch down. So if I use the Zoli tool as a guide, I want something about like that. I'm coming out from the angle of the Zoli tool. So I have a nice, almost a 90 degree triangle. Then when I fold these sides in, because I left so much space at the top, I get this nice bulky point. It's got a lot of umph to it. So, and then all this fringe is gonna go back over the eye bumps. So that becomes actually the upper lip, upper part of the skull. I don't know how to describe it. So I'm still, you know, my eye bumps get a little less um, distinguished. Is that the right word? But um, because of all this new wool I'm putting on, but they're still there. So I'm still felting, you know, trying to accentuate them. There, so now he has a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a face happening. And depending on what reference picture you decide to use, you're gonna shape this in different ways. Some of them, their eyes are like right up on the edge of their smile. Some of them, the eyes are a little farther in on the head. Which 
just just depends.